Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Hard Count. I'm Mike Lee Mauman. I recently had a great interview with Prosper High School's offensive tackle, Colin Beasley. Beasley is a member of the 2023 class and currently stands at 6 foot 5 inches and 250 pounds. An athletic lineman, Beasley has great footwork and technique and is able to balance well downfield and demonstrates grit and toughness on every snap. He's able to dominate and control the line of scrimmage with his size, and we talk a little bit about that and more on this episode. All right, everyone, here is Colin Beasley. Enjoy. So um, I see here you go to Prosper High School in Texas, uh, obviously a huge uh, football culture in that state. Tell me a little about your uh, program and how you've developed within it. Uh, so Prosper, we've uh, we've been known as one of the top programs for a while. Two years ago, we went from 5A to 6A, and it's been a pretty big step up. Um, you know, we're trying to be the top dogs here in 6A, and uh, – Basically, how I've developed within it is the form of, like, team and community we have within ourselves. Uh, Prosper, we all, we're all one big family. You know, all the players, we're all really good. We're all really close. And developing within it, you know, we've all just been, we've all gotten closer and, you know, been through the team, the ups and downs, the transition from 5 to 6A. You know, it's it's took a lot on a lot of us. And uh, mentally. And we're all just, you know, coming together and being good teammates. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. So your class of 2023, uh, varsity, how long have you been varsity for? So they don't move any freshmen up to varsity here. So this is my first year. I mean, I'm a sophomore. So yeah, just this year. Right, right. Cause I see your, uh, your huddle's got a, you know, almost, almost a thousand views on it. That's pretty good for your for your class and obviously you're a tackle and and I've got you on here as a tackle on offense but um can you tell me about your relationship with your head coach right Brandon Schmidt is that right yes sir and so how has this year gone for you to this point and tell me about your relationship with him uh, my relationship with coach Schmidt has been going pretty good you know uh, me and him will sometimes talk after practice about how things are going and I, I am the youngest person on the team right now um and he's always been there for me I mean he's built me up and he's trying to find a bunch of little things in me that I can bring out. And just our relationship has been going pretty good. And, uh, you know, every day he strives to make me better. And uh, he's just been there for me. And he's a really good guy. And building that relationship with us, I feel like in Prosper, having a relationship with the coaches is super important. It's one of the most important things you can do with the coach is have a good relationship with them. And I've been able to build a good one since freshman year with Coach Schmidt. Okay. All right. And so you mentioned that he, um, he pushes you to do better, makes you better. So tell me a little about what he kind of does. Do you know of what he does specifically involving that? Uh, yes, sir. He just, he pulls me over sometimes, you know, he'll tell me the certain techniques to do, you know, tell me I'm doing it right. You know, there's a little thing you can tweak in it to make it better. And he always strives me basically what he does in that, you know, he, uh, he pushes me to be the best I can be. And by doing that, you know, it brings out a lot in me and I feel, Coming from a leader such as him, I mean, the head coach, just me and him have a pretty tight bond. I mean, whenever he tells me, like, sometimes he'll tell me, like, I can do, like, way better than that. He's seen better than that. You know, that strives me the next play to do way better than that. You know, just having that relationship, and that's what he does to push me forward. Okay, okay, that's very, very cool. And obviously, so you're going into next year now. You obviously kind of towards the back end of this year. Um, I don't know how your season's gone involving what they're doing with COVID and stuff like that. Have you had a full season at this point? Yes, sir. We've had a full season, but um, two of our games were postponed and then canceled. Okay. So everything but those two games, they were the two games before our first district game. Right. So they didn't really matter as much, but uh, that's really it. Other than that, we've had a full season, no cancellations, no delays. Um, okay. You know, down here, the COVID protocols – same, same everywhere else, you know, you got to wear the mask uh, on the sidelines. Um, you don't have to have it in the game, but in practice, you're supposed to have a mask. You know, lifting, you got to have a mask. Okay. And we've, uh, we've only had a couple players quarantined this whole time. I mean, we're doing pretty good about it. So. Okay, wow. That's, that's great news. Um, so, obviously, I can see you guys have handled that very, very well. And so, I kind of wanted to go into what you're kind of looking at next season right now. Um, so, what kind of techniques or kind of things are you trying to hone in on for next year? Um, to try and get better at uh next year i'm just working on a lot of run blocking schemes i mean i'm a little bit undersized in the weight i'm only 245 you know being 6'5 i'm considered small i guess as my coaches like to say but um 
you know, I'm really going to start working on the run blocking schemes and putting, you know, pancaking D1 ends because it's happened a couple times. But, you know, I feel like if I can work on certain footwork, you know, uh, our inside zone steps and footwork, that's something I need a lot of. I feel like I can use a lot of training with that. You know, um, but that's basically what I'm really good. I feel like I have a lot more skill in pass pro right now than I do in inside zone schemes. Right. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I'm focusing on now and what I'll probably focus into next season. Yeah. And your film obviously shows that a lot. And so I one one of the things that I kind of wanted to bring up here. So, um, obviously, you know, you're making that transition and, and kind of you're, you're going with that. And we, you talked a little about what you're doing with weights and stuff. What does a tr- your training regimen look like? What does kind of a given week look like for you involving what you're doing uh, in training? So a given week for me, basically, um, Mondays, my power clean days, Tuesdays, bench days, Wednesday is auxiliary. So it can be like hang clean, snatch, uh, reverse lunge, knee drives. Thursday, I take a lighter lift day for more recovery. And then Friday, I hit the heavy squats. Yeah, yeah, I can see you got 250 bench, 405 squat, and then 450 on the deadlift. Those are pretty good numbers, obviously, and that's according to your huddle. I don't know if those have changed uh, since then. Yeah, they've gone up a bit. Yeah, that's good news. It's really good news. And so kind of going off of that, to just kind of segue into uh, in kind of your personal life a little bit here, tell me a little about your relationship with your mom and dad, your parents, and kind of what they've done to influence you as a football player. You know, my dad, he's, uh, he's always wanted me to be a baseball kid, and uh, – so our relationship through that, you know, it hasn't always been the greatest. Whenever I told him that I stop, I wanted to stop playing baseball to focus on football. And, um, you know, it was hard for us at first, but I feel like he definitely has. Because my dad was, uh, he was safety in high school. So he didn't know a lot about offensive line. And, you know, I really, really enjoy playing football. And he, I guess he felt like baseball was more of the sport for me. But now he really strives to make me the best player I can be no matter in what sport so our relationship with that has been pretty good you know he's doing a lot to help me out recruiting wise and talking to people and me and my dad's relationship with football now is I mean it's amazing we talk about it every day it's just something we bond on okay okay and yeah my mom doesn't get too involved with this stuff but yeah she supports me you know she'll uh, come out cheer me on at games that's all I need from her really right, it's the well. most support that helps that's awesome. That's awesome. And so I guess kind of going off of that, um, involving your parents and stuff like that. So tell me about your, the kind of the academic rigor at your school and how you kind of go about balancing sports and academics. So I do spend a lot of time on both, but I mean, I have a pretty good GPA right now, 4.2 on 5.0 scale. So it just sometimes it's hard for me to find time to study whenever I practice every day and I don't get out of school until late because we stay after to lift. And, um, you know, but I spend a lot of time at home, you know, I'll stay up a little bit late at nights, maybe till like midnight on practice nights. And, you know, school is really important to me. Uh, definitely. I'd say it's about a 50, 50 school and football. Okay. Um, but yeah, grades matter just as much to me about, you know, playing and I have to find time for grades just like I have to, I have to find time for football. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good news there. Good news there. And so, um, what kind of colleges are you looking at to this point? Where have you kind of started making a search or started kind of, I know the, the deadline or not the deadline, the requirement for you to, for coaches to reach out to, I know is your junior year. Um, yes, sir. so right now you're kind of out, w- tell me about what kind of, um, you're doing right now involving that. So, uh, I'm just, a lot of this is researching schools and what you have to do to get in there and researching the coaching staff. And I've started researching, you know, the type of offense, the type of defense they run and, you know, what I like and just what I like about the school, the campus, you know, where it is at, you know, where it's, where it's located in the state. And I have my eyes on a couple like rice down here, you know, it's really good top tier academic school. They have a really good program. I like the area, Michigan state, um, Michigan state was brought to me because my cousin, he's a starting defensive end there. Right, right. Yeah. You know, he, he was a big inspiration to go because I, I think Michigan State is my top school that I go to. And he's probably been my biggest inspiration to go there. And I love the area down there. My dad's from Michigan. And it, it's probably my top pick. Yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Right. Uh, is it Dr- Drew Beasley, right? Yes, sir. Drew Beasley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. 
Um, so tell me about, so are those kind of the only two schools that you're kind of really looking at? Or are there other ones on your list? Do you know what you're kind of hot and cold on in terms of what your interests are involving those? Yeah, there's some, uh, there's some other schools like Vanderbilt, um, you know, a lot of top academic schools, uh, really Michigan would be fine too. Yeah. I, I just love the state. So, and you know, Michigan and Michigan state are both really good schools. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to going to OU or UT, you know, staying local, but um, basically any like top academic schools that I could get into that I'm able to with good programs. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So just kind of one kind of final question for you here. Um, Cause I usually ask this just for fun. If you were to get drafted by an NFL team, what would be your preferred team that you would want to get drafted by? Oh boy. You know, that's a hard decision. It's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd want to go off my favorite team, but uh, they're horrible. So, <laughs> you know, I just have to say the Lions. You know, I as much as I hate to say that, you know, they're horrible, but they're still my favorite team. So, awesome, awesome. I just yeah. have to say it. You might you might bring them to the top. You never know. They could use a good good yeah. offensive lineman. Could use definitely yeah, their good... offensive line definitely needs some help right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Colin. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. All right, everyone, that was Colin Beasley out of Prosper High School in Texas. If you'd like to contact Colin, his Twitter account is at Colin Beasley underscore 73. And I'll be I'll be uh, sure to post his huddle link and information below as well if you want to go ahead and check that out. If you'd like to contact me, my Twitter account is at Imami Michael, and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That'd be much appreciated. Also, be sure to uh, check out and follow the Instagram and Facebook pages. They are at The Hard Count with Michael Imami if you want to go ahead and check that out. That'd be much much appreciated. Um, and once again, special thank you to uh, Colin for coming on. It's great to interview another uh, offensive tackle as well. Demonstrates great uh, grit and toughness as well, and his highlights definitely demonstrate that. And uh, we definitely enjoy talking about talking with him and, and talking about what he's been going through in his program. Right, everybody, thanks so much for listening. This has been the Hard Count. Do you have what it takes to go to one?